hello uh, it's Sunday again it's a bit later in the day uh, I'm smoking a, a little um, Mr. Brog I think it is yeah Mr. Brog it was a gift uh, to me some time ago from my good friend Edward through the Edward who makes some very interesting videos if you haven't already caught them has a very excellent moustache as well which is uh, uh, touch the old moustache envy I kind of trimmed mine back a bit actually I uh, I, I I regret it because the funny thing is you think oh, I was quite I've not been in the best of health over recent months and uh, when you're not feeling very well fiddling around with a bloody moustache every day excuse my French uh, is uh, is a bit much really so I just trimmed the damn thing off but of course the minute you do that you start to think oh dear my beautiful moustache because of course a bit, to be honest with you if you grow a, a, a proper sort of wall or somewhere you don't actually trim it off the lip uh, in um, the barbers I go to one day I must take my video camera there the, the barber shop the, the, the old fellow that owns it collects uh, shaving memorabilia from moustache cups to razors to you know do all sorts of things it's a it's a if for those who are interested in that sort of thing uh, it's fascinating uh, badger brushes of varying sizes but anyway uh, the English moustache is where you trim uh, this moustache along the line of the lip and then leave it to grow at the end uh, and the kind of traditional handlebar moustache is where you allow the thing to grow evenly all the way along and then just wax it and pull the, the hairs off your lip uh, the thing is if you, if you don't wax every day <laughs> I'm sure you ladies, uh, well, I don't think there's probably many ladies who watch these videos. Uh, you ladies who uh, have to do that with your legs, uh, it's probably a lot more painful than uh, uh, waxing a moustache. But uh, to be honest with you, I've never been uh, one to have the time or the patience to uh, to wax every day. Um, I knew a chap when I was in I was in a military hospital after my accident. This is quite some years ago. Uh, he'd been on the close protection course, which is uh, obviously protecting diplomats and things. Like that. Anyway, he'd had a gun had misfired and he'd blown his kneecap off. <laughs> shouldn't laugh. Shouldn't laugh. Uh, it was well. I tell you why I'm laughing because I'm remembering. Uh, they used to come down every. That, it, it, they left the wound open because it was obviously in very close proximity to his knee when the gun fired and obviously it discharged all the powder and cordite into the wound so they had to leave it open to get all the muck out of it and uh, every night they used to come down with a you know trolley with a little kidney dish with bits of linen lint and antiseptic and dressings and all the rest of it to clean it and uh, They'd go in and they'd start cleaning it and you'd hear him going, oh, oh, you know, the curtains close and everything. Going, oh, dear, I hope he's all right. Anyway, uh, this would get to a point and the nurse would come out and then down would come the uh, gas cylinder with the mask, the Entomox, the laughing gas. And uh, the cleaning would start again and you'd hear the gas going. And, oh, God. <laughs> and this screaming would turn into laughing. But anyway, the one thing, getting back to the story, is that he had an enormous moustache he was a military policeman and he had this great big moustache and every night he used to go down to the uh, the bathroom and and with a, with a kit and he'd comb all the wax out of the moustache he used to do this every day and it, it was a big moustache you know and he'd comb all the wax out and then he'd put little um the, kind of like little wax papers on the on the handlebars and uh, he had a, like a net that went around his face and it was quite a sight he hobbled back because obviously he was with this this net on his face with the with the little papers on the end of the moustache <laughs> anyway most amusing uh, but anyway anyway so what, what was i talking about oh the barber shop oh yeah oh, well anyway round of that's Slightly round the houses there. Uh, so anyway, so anyway, through the Edward, uh, I do. I swear this part a fair bit. It's a nice sort of stubby one, and I, 
it's very practical for when you're working because it's quite short. And if you're doing, uh, I went out in the garden this afternoon with uh, Reg, who's fine, who then had to have a bath because he got very, very muddy out there. As did I. Uh, um, he, uh, he like I was. I've had this. I'm gonna. Get, I bought some apple trees. Uh, uh, oh, I can't even remember what I bought now. Well, I bought three apple trees. One's a, a big cox and uh, 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 what's the other two? I can't remember. You know. Uh, anyway, so I, I was out there doing some bits and pieces, and I put this little sort of wooden board. And it takes me a bit of time because, to be honest, with you, I've got arthritis in my only remaining good arm, uh, and so working with it, uh, any sort of digging things, is really quite painful. So I. Uh, uh, it took my time anyway. I was out there. It was, it was quite nice for a while. And it, we've had showers and things. But anyway, Reg got very muddy. But this is very good because it's nice and short. So you won't knock it out your your, your chops when you if you're um, you know digging away or whatever. Uh, I've found with longer pipes that happens a lot if you're doing uh, manual tasks around the home or in the garden. Uh, uh, you tend to, to knock it into the pipe, but if you have a nice little sort of stubby short one like that, it's just the job. Um, anyway, uh, funny thing was my father, uh, he um, uh, took up the pipe for a while. He gave up the cigarettes, which was a good thing, uh, and he, he took up the pipe. But he, he used to do a lot of sort of work in barns and things like that, and he was forever sort of jamming the pipe into his, you know. So he just gave up in the end, gave up everything. Well, he carried on smoking cigars for some years, and then uh, and then gave those up. But uh, but yes, yeah, so he did try the pipe. Uh, anyway, the, today's video, how we got into moustache waxing and military policemen, I do not know. But anyway, uh, just a quick video. What well, it would have been if I hadn't rambled on. I've got the, these are two recent additions uh, that Peterson. I think I was smoking that last week. And uh, 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 and uh, James um, has just got one actually. The size of this is a 106, I think, and he's got the one. Uh, and I've got this uh, Dunhill Ruby Bark, which is a delightful pipe. Uh, it, it looks better in the evening actually, under under our it, it, simply because it looks darker. Uh, and I'm sure over time, uh, it will darken up. Uh, the thing I was going to talk about was uh, somebody was talking to me the other day uh, and asked me about breaking in pipes. Um, you get lots of, uh, you know, uh, some very strange sort of recipes of putting honey and goodness knows what else into the bowl and things, which I've never done. Uh, many years ago, and it is many years ago now, I was talking to Clive, uh, and I bought a uh, this, in fact, which I've just been smoking, actually, uh, it's a GBD billiard. It's uh, one of my favourite pipes. It's not a pretty pipe in terms of the uh, uh, grain or anything. It's not anything special, but it smokes wonderfully. And uh, uh, and it's that classic billiard shape, which I absolutely, uh, you know, what what more classic pipe can you get? It's a lovely. It's got a big bow anyway. When I bought that, it, it didn't have, uh, it hadn't been um, carbonised uh, in the bowl. And he said, just, you know, fill it right up, but don't smoke it outside for a while until you've built up a, a layer of carbon. What I tend to do, this this, uh, this one came uh, uncarbonized. What I tend to do is just fill half the bowl for a few, about three or four smokes, then fill it right up. And again, I wouldn't smoke it outside for quite, well, you know, two or three weeks of smoking before I'd risk taking it outside. Because what you risk is burning through the side into the briar so the wind will catch it and burn into the briar and then you will get a and it will start uh, a process where you'll just burn through the side of the pipe which would be a terrible thing when you've paid a lot of money for it or, or any money for it in fact you know you want a pipe should if it's looked after last you a good you know lifetime uh the dunhill was carbonized so i don't put anything in the bowl honey or anything like that i just fill her right up well, when I say filler, I always fill my pipes uh, till about, you know, three or four, four or five mil before the, the top. Because, of course, when you light the tobacco, it expands. 
So if you filled it right up, uh, you'll get a great big bunch of tobacco and it makes it difficult. And then you have to tamp that down and it, I think, spoils the smoke because you, you end up having to tamp it down too hard and it, you then get a good draw. Uh, Dunhill, uh, it's a Group 5 billiard, uh, just a fantastic smoking pipe. The fur, uh, uh, you, you know, you could, uh, that costs 20 quid and it's a fantastic smoking pipe, so I don't think you need to buy Dunhill to have a fantastic, but this just happens to be a fantastic smoking pipe. Uh, I am excited every day uh, when I, <laughs> since I've got it, waking up uh, looking forward to actually uh, smoking it because it's that nice. I've been smoking Condor in it. I become, I love these old sort of fashioned English strong flake tobaccos and uh, yeah. So anyway, if just a few tips, a uh, uh, meander into the world of moustaches. Uh, it is November uh, in this country. Uh, I think it is the testicular cancer. Testicular, testicular cancer. Uh, testicular cancer. Uh, not quite sure, but everybody who. But the thing is, when you've already got a beard, you have a, uh, You might most of the time, unless you're sort of at Amish or something like that, might which you wouldn't have a moustache perhaps. Uh, a lot of the time you have one already, uh, so you can't really grow a moustache. So if, if uh, for sponsorship purposes for this um, cancer appeal, but people grow moustaches, so uh, perhaps it was relevant. Anyway, thank you everybody for the comments. I'm afraid I haven't been well this week. I uh, haven't really got around to getting back to people, so I do apologise. i uh, been laid up for most of the week, to be honest with you. But there we go. Anyway, uh, I, I did read all the comments, so I'm very grateful. They're very kind. And to all my old friends and new friends, cheers. And uh, I look forward to talking to you next Sunday.